A warm welcome to everyone behalf of the, on behalf of the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship. We are delighted that you are joining us for the Social Entrepreneur of the Year India celebrations. We are extremely proud of our 12-year partnership with Jubilant Bhartia Foundation. The leading Indian social entrepreneurs awarded in the past have become part of our global community and they have all played a critical role during COVID-19 in India and around the world. At the beginning of the global pandemic, the Schwab Foundation helped to launch the COVID Response Alliance for Social Entrepreneurs hosted at the World Economic Forum to mobilize support for social entrepreneurs on the front lines of the crisis. This has now grown into a network of over 80 members. We are proud to also include the Jubilant Bhartia Foundation as one of our key counterparts in this effort. We thank you for your leadership of the sector more broadly and for advocating the role of social entrepreneurs during the pandemic. Your support of the India 50 Last Miles Responders Initiative, which, we took, which took place in August this year, was crucial. Social entrepreneurs continue to innovate in sustainable and inclusive ways to serve all those around them, but also to create global impact. The Schwab Foundation's community of social innovators have reached the lives of over 600 million people in over 190 countries. Today, we are celebrating four outstanding social entrepreneurs who are using their passion, determination and creativity to address the urgent needs brought by the COVID-19 crisis. While not everyone can win, you can all use this platform to make your voice heard, connect with your peers, and to promote your pertinent programs. Congratulations again to the finalists and to the awardees, and thank you to our valued partners at the Jubilant Bhartia Foundation, and we look forward to continuing this partnership for many years to come. I would now like to ask Klaus Schwab, founder and chairman of the World Economic Forum, to give his welcome remarks. Klaus. Thank you very much, Hilde, and I'm delighted to be with you. And first, congratulations to everybody. We are so proud of our social entrepreneur, and we are very proud also of our long-standing cooperation with uh, Subartia Foundation and with you all. Uh, to make the Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award happening in India, and now even for the 12th time. The World Economic Forum is very much engaged in uh, addressing the big global challenges which we face. And of course, it's COVID, it's inclusion, it's sustainability. But it's not enough that we deal with those challenges just on the level of the decision makers, the politicians and uh, the key business people and representatives of um, academia and media. No, if we want to make progress, we need the engagement of what we call the social entrepreneurs. Those who on the grassroots level really drive progress. And I'm very happy to see more and more social entrepreneurs very much acting also as leaders of innovation. And the combination of social entrepreneurship and the new capabilities we have today with the uh, technologies of the fourth industrial revolution, I think provides the right ground to make social entrepreneurship even more flourishing in the future. So again, my deep appreciation, my congratulations, and I hand back to Hilde. Thank you, Klaus. Shireen Van, Managing Editor, CNBC TV18. You have accompanied the, this award celebration for many years, and we all look forward now and thank you to your presentation of the four finalists. 
Well, Mrs. Schwab and Professor Schwab, thank you very much. Uh, I wish we could have done this in person. Uh, the energy in the room is completely different when we do this collectively. But unfortunately, this is the, uh, the, the times of the pandemic and we have to do this virtually. But thank you very much for kickstarting this edition of the awards. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. And once again, welcome to the 12th Social Entrepreneur of the Year Awards 2021. At CNBC TV 18, we have made it our business to showcase the stories of real change makers, women and men who are committed to making the Indian growth story more equitable. For almost two decades, we've partnered with the Schwab Foundation and the Jubilant Bharatiya Foundation to support social entrepreneurs in India. The last 18 months have tested the human spirit in so many ways. The loss of loved ones, the unbearable longing to be with family and friends as lockdowns and social distancing became the norm. The anxiety of not being able to access health care when needed or the learning loss brought on by the closure of schools. But through this crisis, we've also been witness to the speed at which social enterprises have risen to the occasion, collaborating with each other and partnering with the ordinary citizen to respond to the many challenges we've faced. Innovation and entrepreneurship have played a critical role in bridging some of the key gaps that we face and have helped address the needs of the most vulnerable. The Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award 2021 features four change agents who are pioneering breakthrough solutions that have the potential for impact at scale in healthcare, in e-waste management and financial inclusion. They are changing the way services are delivered at the bottom of the pyramid through inventive use of technology, mobile phones to provide healthcare services to pregnant women and newborns, AI-powered fintech platforms to finance the poor, re-engineering the ecosystem to recycle every fraction of an electronic product and an asset light hospital model to conduct surgeries at a flat 10,000 rupees, taking healthcare to the masses. American anthropologist Margaret Mead said, and I quote, all social change comes from the passion of individuals. Today, we bring you the stories of four passionate entrepreneurs driven by a single-minded purpose to make life better for the Indian citizen. We're going to start with the story of Arman. Every five minutes, a woman dies during childbirth in India. That's according to the World Health Organization. A witness to many such tragedies, Dr. Aparna Hegde, a urogynecologist, founded Arman to address the systematic gaps in healthcare services for pregnant women and children through a tech plus touch approach. Arman's vision is a world where every mother is empowered and every child is healthy. Here's the Arman story. During my medical residency, daily I witnessed how pervasive systemic problems led to loss of lives of mothers and children that was completely preventable. If only the mothers had access to the right information at the right time, they could have recognized the risk factors in time and demanded care. On the other hand, if only the health workers had been trained to pick up the risk factors and treat before it was too late. I realized very early on that if I really want to impact lives, I have to go into the community. And given the scale of India's problems, any solutions I designed had to be scalable, accessible to the last woman and child directly in their homes, and yet cost-effective and resource light. And that's how Arman started. Arman is a non-profit in India that leverages technology to create cost-effective scalable solutions to reduce maternal child mortality and morbidity. The first five years were very difficult because the whole idea of a homegrown Indian NGO creating cost-effective scalable solutions was difficult for people to fathom. But in time, we got the necessary funding and now we're in 19 states and our work has impacted the lives of over 26 million women and their children, and we've trained over 200,000 health workers. Our first program that really scaled up through the country was a program called M Mitra Mobile Friend. Now, Mobile Mitra is a voice calling service, a free service that sends timed and targeted preventive care information directly to the phones of the enrolled women through pregnancy and infancy till the child is one year of age in the women's chosen time slot and language preference. We enroll women wherever we can get them. We've got health workers stationed government hospitals who enroll women in their first antenatal visit. But women come to the hospitals too late 
and hence we enroll women directly in the slums through a partnership with NGOs on the ground. We incentivize their health workers to go home to home and enroll women as soon as possible in pregnancy. We also have a call center manned by trained health workers. So a woman can call back for any query that she may have. And we've reached around 2.5 million women and their children. Because we did Amitra so well, the government of India entered a partnership with us so that we could manage their program called Kilkari. And the program is introduced to the women from the, by the ASHA workers and the nurses in the field. And now Kilkari has reached around 24 million women in 17 states of the country. And on the other hand, we want to train health workers. Now what programs do we have there? Mobile Academy. It's an M-Health based refresher training program for ASHA workers. It is four hours of content which the ASHA can uh, you know, get hold of when she calls into the service. Now, Mobile Academy has trained over 200,000 health workers. A very important program uh, from the perspective of high-risk pregnancy that is called Integrated High-Risk Pregnancy Management in Telangana. It is very difficult for each cadre of the health force, that is the A&M, that is the auxiliary nurse midwife, the medical officer and the specialist in district hospital in rural India to understand what is their part of the role. So we've created prioritized protocols for around 27 uh, high-risk factors for Telangana. And those protocols are tabular, algorithmic, color-coded, so that each cadre understands completely well their part of the role. We're going to have a tracking app. All of these protocols are going to become part of a digital support tool, which will be encoded on the tablets of the a and medical officers, which will track all the women from the time of the picking up of risk factor till the delivery to ensure that everything has gone well. Aroga Sakhi, which works in uh, tribal A parts, where we train ASHA workers to give home-based care. Because these are parts of the country where it's very difficult for women to go to the hospital to access care. Arman constantly measures impact on the ground. There was almost a 22% increase in the proportion of infants who tripled their birth weight at the end of one year. Similarly, if you look at the proportion of women who took 90 days of iron tablets during pregnancy, it was 25% more. When you look at the number of women who accessed care for complications during pregnancy, it was almost 92%. When the pandemic struck, we were right there and ready to bridge the critical gaps in healthcare that arose. Within a matter of days, we started a virtual clinic for antenatal and pediatric care, manned by 60 doctors. Around 16,000 women access care from the virtual clinic. We also offered logistic support for around 60,000 women through the country. We leveraged our tech platform for health workers and sent information on COVID care to over around 800,000 health workers through the country and added COVID content to our voice calls. Around 300,000 pregnant women and mothers got access to information. Our goal is to reach around 45 million women and their children by 2025 and train over 1 million health workers. We also want to add multimedia and two-way communication approaches where we are able to handhold women and children with high risk factors much more so that we can ensure better outcomes for them and their children. Uh, congratulations to Dr. Aparna Hegde and the team at Arman. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a classic example of using technology to bridge one of the key access deficits in India, addressing the healthcare gaps. Let me also take this opportunity to welcome our chief guest for this evening, the principal scientific advisor to the government of India, Professor Vijay Raghavan. Professor Raghavan, many thanks for joining us here uh, for the 12th edition of the Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Appreciate uh, your presence. And we will, of course, come to you in a few minutes from now uh, as we proceed through the course of this evening. Uh, that was our first nominee for this evening, but it's time now to move to our second. India has nearly 200 million people who have no access to financial services. According to the World Bank's Global Findex report, that's the second largest unbanked population in the world. And that's where Seema Prem, an MIT graduate, is working to bridge the gap through her venture, FIA Global. In partnership with government agencies and banks, FIA Global ensures last mile distribution of financial services by setting up banking outlets in remote regions across India. Here's a look at our next social entrepreneur who's banking the unbanked.
As an army child, I've um, lived in some of the most inaccessible terrains in the country where I've had an opportunity to witness uh, real deep inequity. PI is a culmination of my passion for uh, uh, inclusivity, uh, technology, and uh, a desire to solve uh, some of the world's uh, biggest uh, developmental challenges. When we came in India in 2012, so the market, the industry was actually characterized by um, uh, uh, few partnerships, uh, concentration in urban geographies with very minimal rural uh, presence. The industry was also known for long break-evens. So we decided to kind of disrupt the way business was functioning. PI is a neobank that is redefining the way financial services are distributed to low-income customers in South Asia. We serve 45 million customers through a 30k banking outlets. The business model is a combination of physical branch outlets powered by an AI-based uh, platform. So PI is one of the largest uh, partnerships in the country with close to around 30 plus uh, uh, banking alliances with public sector banks, regional rural banks and uh, private sector banks. Uh, there are 1 billion banked uh, accounts, however, more than 85% of these accounts do just cash-in and cash-out transactions. And this is where PIA hopes to fill this gap by offering Finvesta, which is a mobile platform, um, which is a one-stop shop of all financial needs of the last mile customer. PIA works on the financial uh, inclusion program of the government, which is popularly known as the Pradhan Mantri Jandan Yojana. So uh, in a PMJDY program, the unbanked customer can walk into a FIA banking outlet, open a bank account, deposit money, withdraw transactions, and do fund transfers to any account in the country. They can also avail subsidies of the uh, government and enroll in social security schemes of the government, including Atal Pension Yojana, uh, the Pradhan Mantri uh, Bhima Suraksha Yojana, and the Jeevan Jyoti uh, Yojana, which are insurance and pension schemes a uh, bank account has a huge uh, transformative effect uh, for people. One of our customers who is a uh, 60-year-old uh, Radhabai Payak, she and her husband, 78-year-old husband, has opened a bank account with uh, FIA. Uh, earlier, she used to actually literally save the uh, cash that she received from selling her farm's produce under her mattress. A drunkard son would take the money. Um, there were also leakages in the social security payments which was given to them. After opening a bank account with FIA, now the money was directly deposited into her bank account. The subsidies were also directly credited into the bank account. And like she says, Mere angutha ke bina, no one can take money away from my account. So that is the power of the Jandan uh, program. We rapidly set up a multi-stakeholder partnership model and scaled very fast into some of the most interior parts of the country. First centres that we were given was in uh, Purulia, which was in the Maoist infiltrated belt and no one had succeeded as an organisation uh, in setting up centres there and sustaining it over a period of time. The 200 plus centres that we have set up in Bankura and Purulia, Purulia district still are running. Uh, providing gainful employment to a lot of uh, rural youth. So the identification of the bank, Mitra or the bank Saki, is one of the most crucial activities that FIA does because he's a representative of the bank and FIA in that particular community. We go to a particular a village, identify a, a few prospective candidates who can uh, become our uh, banking agent. The details of the individual and the demographics and the uh, local economy is fed into our scoring model and based on the uh, results of the scoring model the details are then forwarded to the bank. The bank in turn allots a code which is very similar to a branch code and then the center becomes operational. Our certified DRA uh, recovery agents also go out in the field and collect uh, information um, and uh, money on uh, behalf of the banks from uh, defaulters. FIA handles close to 200,000 uh, transactions on a daily basis, which translates to 2,500 crores in uh, uh, cash, which gets digitized on a monthly basis. Annually, this is about $3 billion of uh, cash digitization. 
post the lockdown the transactions reduced to almost 20 percentage of the usual uh, uh, transactions so this uh, would have had a devastating impact on um, one uh, the banking mitra uh, sustainability and viability and two for the provision of life sustaining uh, cash to rural india uh, one of the policies that we uh, got um, enabled and implemented early on was classifying uh, our banking mitras which are the frontline warriors uh, as essential services uh, we also worked uh, with the government to ensure that um, covid cash relief was uh, provided uh, to the uh, uh, last mile customers 500000 plus uh, banking agents across the country who ensured uh, that there was a steady supply of cash a huge focus area for fear this would be rebuilding economic resilience especially amongst uh, women through its uh, alternate lending uh, solution which focuses on the credit invisible we also do auto remittances to nepal uh, we also plan to start our bangladesh operations this year our 2025 goals is 1 million jobs through our lending solutions uh, 10 billion in savings and 100 million customers Yeah, global may you continue to bank the unbanked ladies and gentlemen it is now time for the third entrepreneur of this evening in this era of gadgets india is collecting a humongous pile of discarded phones laptops computers and a lot more according to the global e-waste monitor india is now the third largest generator of e-waste most of which gets treated crudely in informal markets our next impact entrepreneur pranchu single founded karo sambhav as a movement to tackle this serious environmental and health hazard. Through Karo Sambhav, Single wants to create an ecosystem which involves all stakeholders, from consumers and waste pickers to the world's largest manufacturers, to ensure recovery, recycling, and reuse of all kinds of waste. Here's the story of Karo Sambhav. We buy so many things, but what is the end, end of life for these products that we buy? Someone comes to our home, we call him a kabadiwala, a waste picker, a waste aggregator, and they are collecting this waste and taking it with them. And as people, as individuals, once that person has taken it, you know, we are done. Uh, we are not bothered what happens to it. But there is a big story which continues uh, once this waste has been collected. East Delhi, Mustafabad, Silampur, these are places where waste would get aggregated from across the country, from where they would travel to either, you know, multiple cities in UP like uh, Loni, Muradabad, uh, where they would be informally treated. Uh, it would mean using cyanide-based acid baths for extraction of uh, certain types of met metals, open air burning of fires, and this, is, this has caused significant amount of human and environmental impacts. India generates roughly, uh, you know, anywhere between three to five million tons of electronic waste in a year. Uh, this amount of waste is going to grow. A question to my own self was that, you know, what, what could be my role in all this? The only answers I got was this is impossible. This sounds difficult, this will not happen. India is not too ready, informal sector is too large. Uh, this is cash trade, there is mafia. Indian government in 2017 started the journey uh, wherein they gave targets to brands to collect waste. Then came in the idea of Karosamba, uh, which translates to make it possible. Government's effort in this direction was to set up a system which will enable producers to uh, create collection channels, ensure that whatever waste is collected is sent for recycling, and further, that recycled content is used back for creating new products. So companies like Apple, Dell, uh, HP, they became primary members. And uh, today we have over 40 brands who are members of Karo Sambhav. Three aspects of organization fundamentally. The first was creating this ecosystem which will allow industry frameworks to evolve. Second was being inclusive so that informal sector can be integrated. And third, 
how do you how do we use technology to solve this problem when we started our first focus was this is this is a behavioral shift and uh, behavioral shift doesn't happen in a day so the very first program that we launched was a school program till date we have engaged with over 2900 schools the second is setting up of collection systems how do i work with repair shops because people also sell them their waste how do i go to a individual household to collect the waste how do i go to an office complex to collect the waste so these are different channels uh, which we have focused on for collecting the waste back from the market the biggest channel by far uh, is the informal sector channel when when karosamba was started uh, our first focus was on formalizing the informal sector now saying it is easy but believe me it is not majority of the work used to happen in cash and uh, a formal sort of work would mean digital transactions uh, it would mean accountability of money it would mean paying taxes we encourage them to set up a registered entity which can be tracked and to whom we can pay money uh, digitally today we have over 5000 plus waste pickers and aggregators in our system uh, over a few hundred companies have been formed under this uh, initiative karo sambhav has directly just in the e waste space we have done transactions over uh, 65 crores with the uh, with the informal sector today karo sambhav has roughly uh, 45 collection centers across the country via the collection centers we roughly collect anywhere between 20 to 40 tons a day and this waste is sent to a recycler what we also realized is there are a lot of waste fractions for which we really don't have the best answers in terms of recycling for example when we talk of a laptop you start opening a laptop it has multiple types of plastics apart from that there will be glass there will be acrylic there would be a printed circuit board with all its chipsets there would be a hard drive there would be body cover which will have some aluminum and what is important is to find answer for each of these fractions you know what is generally being talked in e-waste is is uh, is the you know the dialogue is generally limited to printed circuit board or place where precious metals are present we can't just have answers to some things and let other things go to a uh, a tsdf or for incineration that is not Uh, in the long run an acceptable answer so we started with electronics but are now working in plastics packaging we are working in batteries waste management and also very recently we have start we are starting to work in glass karosambhav is working with pace which is pet packaging association for clean environment and pace is essentially a consortium of 35 plus large companies which roughly account for 60% of the total plastics being put on the indian market and uh, almost 90% of the pet being put uh, in the country today we don't see any debates on why should uh, why should this be done we see a good amount of debates on how it should be done and that is a big progress however there are a whole range of challenges so what we need today to solve this problem is bringing accountability to the system if we have to act we have to act now and fast if we are unable to solve the problem within the next 5 to 7 years then probably we'll have missed the bus alpranchu singer and the team at karo sambhav uh, thank you for helping us believe that nothing is impossible congratulations to you on to our final finalist this uh, evening the poor quality of healthcare is responsible for a large proportion of deaths in india according to the economic survey of 2021 a critically ill patient in a small town in india is most likely to die than be able to find timely treatment as most good quality hospitals are located in or around big cities with the mission of saving lives and making quality healthcare accessible to all dr shruchan bajaj set up ujala signus the group offers high quality intensive care to the poor and vulnerable while busting the myth that life saving critical medical care needs to be always expensive here's their story i've 
everybody was very proud that I had become a doctor and now I could help people. So I used to get a lot of calls from my friends and family uh, saying somebody's had a heart attack or somebody's had an accident, somebody's had a head injury and could I help them? And of course I felt very proud that I could help and uh, I would say yes, yes, of course why not come over and I'll get a bed for you and arrange everything here. Sometimes I would keep waiting for them for a very long time. The next day when I would call them, uh, I would get to hear that, you know, that patient had died on the way in the car. So we just turned around and came back to our village. These were the stories that I kept hearing again and again and again I, and I kept wondering what I could do to solve all these issues. Based on these personal stories and interactions and family experiences, the concept of these hospitals in small towns came about. One small clinic then became one hospital, then we opened three more, then more investors came in. And now we have 15 of these hospitals spread across four states of North India. So all of these uh, hospitals are approximately about 100 to 200 beds each. We are very conscious of the fact that if you're making something which is fit for poor, it need not be poor quality. So uh, we set up uh, NABH accredited high quality hospital with all the facilities that a big city hospital should have and would have. Uh, at approximately 10 to 15% of the cost that it would for any other bigger organization. We also work on very low costs on the out-of-pocket part. The problem is people in India save for education, they save for their marriages, they save for feasts, but nobody saves for an illness. And this health shock brings more than 6 crore people below the poverty line every year just due to healthcare costs. Uh, we can operate most of the surgeries for you at a flat 10,000 rupee cost, so it includes everything. And the deliveries can be as low as 2,000, 2,500 rupees. And of course, if you have third party payers for you who are paying like if you are in a government organization and that pays, or if you have a private insurance with a TPA paying for you, then we'll take whatever uh, the rates set by those organizations are. And this is why uh, we love Ayushman Bharat so much and we've been the champions of Ayushman Bharat uh, because most of the people that could not pay at all earlier now have Ayushman cards. Uh, we treat more than 2 million patients every year. The Ayushman Bharat Yojana, India's universal health coverage scheme, aims to provide free medical treatment to over 50 crore underprivileged citizens. It covers all costs for over 1,600 medical procedures at impaneled government and private hospitals. Organizations like Ujala Cygnus have been able to treat poor patients under this scheme, hence saving them lakhs of rupees in medical expenses. In the bed right next to where I am uh, is a 28-year-old patient undergoing dialysis and he comes from more than 50 kilometers away to get his dialysis done twice a week just because he has an Ayushman card and there is no hospital close to where he stays which offers him free dialysis. Ujala Cygnus follows the mantra, prevention is better than cure. It runs a network of outreach clinics or Sehat clinics in villages around its hospitals. The aim is to spread awareness and catch illnesses early to prevent hospitalization. Each week, over 70 Sehat clinics are set up to serve 200 to 300 people on weekdays and thousands over the weekend to promote healthcare and to make sure that the costs of the disease are really low, we need to go into the villages and work with them. Our Sehat clinics are situated in small villages and kasbas around our hospitals where an MBBS doctor sits the whole day. We have a pharmacy, we have laboratory services, we have an x-ray there so that we can take care of most of the small, small things and the primary care of that community before they become complicated and so that they do not have to come to the hospital at all. In our hospitals, we get a lot of people with complicated diabetes. So in every camp, we detect almost 5 to 10 new diabetics who had no idea that they were suffering from diabetes and their blood sugars are way through the roof. And imagine we are holding about 70 camps every week 
so 10 camps every day so imagine how many new diabetics we are detecting the geography that we are present in all of north india very small towns villages it's unfortunately a very deeply patriarchal society so getting the women out of their houses and you know seeing their issues they are so shy that they won't even talk about their issues even if they're very ill so we make sure that we bring a lot of women into our camp the covid pandemic was as different in the first two waves as chalk and cheese we realized that we had completely lost touch with the community we didn't know how to uh, get in touch with them how to manage their chronic disorders and uh, then we started our digital health solution within two days in the first month during that lockdown we were doing as many as 35,000 teleconsultations per month and this helped us stay in touch with the community the second wave of course was an entirely different story it came in like a tsunami and flattened all of us. Delhi was one of the most affected geographical regions. It was reeling under the wave. So the Delhi government wanted to add more veg very quickly. Within seven days of that conversation, just starting off, on 1st of May, we had inaugurated this Burari Jumbo Center with a thousand oxygen beds in it. However much we may speak of primary healthcare and preventive healthcare, the unfortunate reality is that these kinds of complications will keep occurring and we will keep needing all these tertiary care facilities for a long time to come. We have a population that is extremely young right now, but they will get older and when they do get older, the facilities that we have currently will fall way short of what will be needed in the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, combining passion with purpose, the stories of four of our finalists uh, this evening. As we've seen, it takes not one, but a group of committed, passionate individuals to create social impact and do so at scale. Uh, there is hope that many of the critical issues that require our attention and urgent intervention can be addressed by the power of social entrepreneurship. Once again, congratulations to the four change agents, Dr. Aparna Hegde, Seema Prem, Prancho Singhal, and Dr. Suchin Bajaj, with that, I now hand it over to Sham Bhartia, Director at the Jubilant Bhartia Foundation, to take the evening forward. Mr. Bhartia. Thank you, Shireen. Respected Professor K. Vijay Raghavan, Principal Scientific Advisor to Government of India, Professor Klaus Swab, Mrs. Hilde Swab, Jury members, Shireen Hari, Ladies and gentlemen who are watching this award ceremony live on various platforms across the world. Good evening and welcome to this 12th Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award. We just witnessed an excellent presentation on all the finalists by Shireen. The energy, the spirit, the enthusiasm of the social entrepreneurs is indeed commendable. Thank you, Shireen, for your personal commitment to the showcase these social entrepreneurs for the years together. I would like to extend a very special welcome to our distinguished chief guest for the evening, Professor K. Vijay Rag, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India and especially thank him for agreeing to join us at a very short notice. Professor Vijay Raghavan is a distinguished professor in the field of developmental genetics and former director of National Center of Biological Sciences. He has to his name numerous prestigious accolades and honor across the globe. In 2013, he was conferred the Padam Shri by the President of India. Professor Vijay Raghavan has served 
as Secretary, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India from 2013 to 2018, and was elected as Foreign Associate of the U.S. National Academy of Sciences in 2014. He has been deeply involved in the management of COVID-19 in India since very beginning. The shattering second wave of COVID-19 brought to the front the extraordinary role of social entrepreneurs as frontline workers. It has also showcased their vast reach and penetration. The social entrepreneur acted as a corporate India's and the government's implementation partners working hand in hand during this time. The social entrepreneurs, however, need the government support to further augment their work. Some interventions that could help them to include defining social enterprises in India, allowing social entrepreneurs with less than three years of experience and for-profit social entrepreneurs to receive financial support through the corporate CSR funding and fast-tracking the social stock exchange announced by the government of India two years ago. On our part, Jubilant Bharatiya Group set up Jubilant Bharatiya Foundation a not-for-profit foundation with the vision to bring progressive social change through strategic multi-stakeholder partnership. The foundation focuses on four essential domains of universalizing elementary education, improving health indices through innovative services, escalating employability and enabling a conducive environment for social entrepreneurship. Two years ago, we had signed a tripartite agreement with Stanford University for the Hindustan Times Fellowship under the Stanford Seed Transformation Program in India. I'm happy to inform that this year, we have started giving the HD Fellowship, fellowship to the social entrepreneurs recommended by Stanford. I am also happy to announce that Jubilant Bharatiya Foundation is now part of the World Economic Forum Initiative, COVID Response Alliance for Social Entrepreneurs. We will, through this alliance, provide a platform to showcase the work done by the social entrepreneurs in India as well as globally to leverage the network of World Economic Forum for mobilizing resources. This is the 12th year of our journey to select the Social Entrepreneur India Awards. In these 12 years, we have come in contact with over 1,700 social entrepreneur applicants. Several of them featured in World Economic Forum's recently released list of India's top 50 COVID-19 last mile responders during COVID. I am particularly happy to note that this year we have received over 100 diverse applications, out of which 28 were women social entrepreneurs and two of them have made it to the finals. I would like to thank all the jury members for their unstinted support, help, guidance, and time to select the finalist for this year. I am told it was a very tough decision for them to decide the winner. Before I close, I would like to express my heartfelt gratitude to Klaus and Hilde for being part to be their partners and look forward for continuing our partnership for many more years to come. 
I now invite Hilde to take over the proceedings. Thank you. Well, my great pleasure also to welcome our chief guest, Professor Vijay Raghavan, Principal Scientific Advisor to the Government of India. And I would like to ask you to present the certificates to our finalists, namely Aparna Hedke from Arman, Sima Prem from FIA Global, Ranchu Singhai from Karo Samaf, and Chuchin Bajaj from Uchala Signos. Floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Shwab. Um, I hereby present the uh, certificates to the winners. Is there anything specific I need to do other than congratulate them on screen? No, nothing else. Just congratulate. We all congratulate all the four of them. Congratulations well, so, to everybody. Yeah. yeah, we can see their diplomas. So thank you very much. And congratulations to all of you. So now I have an envelope. The, of course, you cannot all win, but you can really use this network to uh, explain your programs and to work with others and, and um, continue your fantastic work. Now, the winner is Ranjul Singhal Karo Zambai. Congratulations. <laughs> Almost like the Oscars. Party <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank so you. Would you please would you please address us? You have a small speech prepared, I hope. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, time out of words, uh, to say the least. Uh, and uh, yeah, I've never expected this to happen uh, with all the people, you know, who are here with me. Uh, first of all, I'd like to really thank uh, Dr. Suchit here. He has been an inspiration to me. Uh, we studied together at uh, in London, and uh, he was the first person who motivated me to leave my job and uh, become an entrepreneur. Thank you, Suchit. Thank you. Thank you for that. And... Uh, I would, I'd really like to thank the jury, uh, the group of recognizing uh, Karosambhav and, uh, and, and, you know, in some way kickstarting this whole journey of making things circular. Today, if we look all around us, we have all sorts of things, you know, our furniture, table, chairs, bed, linen, mattresses, our cars, and for, for everything, you know, while we have a solution to create a product, we have almost no solutions to bring them back to their elemental form. Very little money, if any, is going into this, these systems. And uh, I think this award will really help us be a catalyst uh, in, this, in this space. Uh, Karosamba was set up because we were starting to believe that we, have, we are reaching the, at the point of no return. We are today in the decade of action. And uh, change is unlikely if we, if we act without collective push and action. Uh, we need a movement, a movement where people, where organizations, enterprises, governments collaborate, co-create uh, solutions. And uh, it is so, so critical to drive this movement, uh, to create the right habits by doing experiential learning because this change is, is, is very large. And sometimes, uh, or not sometimes, I would say many a times we need to lose hope within the organization that it is, is it really possible? Uh, however, uh, it, it, it seems it is. And the belief that you are today putting in Karosamo as an organization, uh, I am really, really thankful uh, to all of you. Uh, I'm also thankful to the whole Karosambhav team who has worked crazily hard. Uh, and, you know, despite all, uh, despite all uh, challenges that we face at a grassroots level, the ability to, to, to rise every day, go talk to people, make sure we are able to uh, encourage people to change, uh, organizations to consider this transition to circular economy, uh, 
I'm really, really thankful. I'll also like to thank the brands who have put faith in us, uh, which led to us to start this organization and have allowed us to carry. I really like to thank uh, our ecosystem partners. IFC was the first organization who, who reposed uh, faith in Karosambhav, uh, GIZ, WEEE Forum, and then platforms like Societal Platform, Ashoka Fellowship, or, or Stanford Program, which has been phenomenal in the journey of, uh, of shaping Karosambha. Uh, I hope, and uh, I hope this award will go a long, long way in uh, establishing a well-governed, accountable, high on ethics and standards uh, industry uh, of recycling in India. Uh, thank you, thank you once again. Thank you and congratulations. It was a wonderful um, demonstration of passion and, and energy. And I'm sure you can uh, be a very well and fantastic addition to our network of social entrepreneurs. So thank you again. So it is now my pleasure to ask our chief guest, Professor Richard Akram, to address us. Sir, the floor is yours. Um, thank you very much. Um, Ms. Hilde Schwab, and it's a pleasure to be with Professor Claude Schwab, um, Shyam Bhartia, Hari Bhartia, Shireen Bhan, the four finalists of this prestigious award, uh, members of the jury and everyone else who's here. Uh, before I get into my comments, I should say it is really impressive to see all the four finalists. Uh, they were amazing. Uh, Dr. Aparna Hegde, uh, whose contributions in non-linear systemic solutions with impact on maternal and child health uh, was really wonderful to see. Uh, Seema Prem of FIA to look at how financial services for the needy can be reconfigured. Prakshu Singhal from Karosamba was what the final prize who we just heard about. And uh, Suchin uh, Bajaj of Ujjala Cygnus who showed how much work was done during the second surge in getting the hospital systems uh, ready. So congratulations again to all of you. Uh, it's a great honor to be here with uh, you all today and to meet these inspiring individuals who have brought radical shifts to benefit uh, sections, the most needy sections of our society. And really, if one thing the pandemic has taught us to keep at the center is our most needy. Every idea, every solution must keep them at the focus and not immediate proximate solutions of others. They will come by as long as we keep the focus on the most needy. Uh, this global pandemic ongoing has been a major crisis for the last few years. And social entrepreneurs such as who we have seen here came forward along with many others in each section of society as emergency rescuers for the most vulnerable sections of our society by stretching their means to the maximum possible. We need to take important lessons from these change makers. Working at the grassroots, they offer a unique solution to seemingly impossible challenges. Recognizing their work, ideas, and contribution uh, towards solving challenges will help them scale their work and increase their efficiency. I would also like to compliment two foundations, the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and the Jubilant Bharatiya Foundation for this unique initiative of promoting and recognizing these individuals and their organizations. These entrepreneurs are brand ambassadors for innovation, sustainability, cross-effectiveness, egalitarianism, and much, much more. Now, the COVID-19 second wave was devastating, and this was a surge which was unprecedented. Uh, experts pointed out that a second wave would be coming, but the extent of the surge was something which no one anticipated. And this you know, required our facilities to be ramped up in the search to have capacity several fold more than what was there. It's possible to put in place speedily uh, resources and facilities about 25% more or 50% more, but four or five fold requires an enormous repurposing and enormous effort. And this was, of course, a big challenge as we all grimly remember about what happened. But in this period, everyone came to, together to work. Uh, government agencies at the center, at the states, NGOs, 
our research institutions, our universities, all came together, independent of whether they were expert in given areas or not, they worked to address every single aspect of the need at that time, be it oxygen, hospital beds, transportation, uh, new medicines and new vaccines, both of which I'll come to uh, in a little more detail. At the start of the pandemic, India was known as a vaccine producer, but not substantially as a vaccine developer. But the response to the pandemic led our industry and our academia and our science agencies to push vaccine development in addition to production. This PDD resulted in vaccines being made in India, both in collaboration with uh, you know, companies abroad, such as the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine made with Serum Institute and uh, Covishield, and the Covaxin developed by the Indian Council for Medical Research and Bharat Biotech, and other vaccines have now come to the fore, and many more will keep coming. Now, this ramping up of vaccine production was also matched with the ramping up of essential medicines of various kinds, and we uh, had that also uh, be made accessible increasingly despite the great supply chain pressures which were there early on. Steroids in particular were very valuable in treatment as this was demonstrated by detailed trials and making available them, uh, making them available was very important and this was, this required a variety of uh, initiatives. Um, new health infrastructure across the country, COVID dedicated hospitals, COVID care centers, new oxygen plants set up across states, the diversion of industrial oxygen towards hospitals among several other critical initiatives which were started. And the government and the state and the centers also set up modular hospitals in collaboration with our research agencies and NGOs. Uh, and these model, modular hospitals such as Medicap are also mobile, cost-effective and faster deployable uh, hospital extensions uh, to, um, uh, to cater to the increased surge which we see. Today, we are carrying out a huge vaccination drive, uh, and this is something which is unprecedented in scale and timelines, and this is something which is the major protection we have against the pandemic. New variants keep battering against us and challenging our immunity. Vaccines to date are the best protection, and vaccinating everyone is very, very important, and everyone needs to get doubly vaccinated, and soon we will have uh, a target of about 100 crore vaccinated reached. Right now we have about 91 crores and the target of doubly vaccinating uh, everyone is our next goal which will be accomplished with speed. This will protect us substantially and this will allow us also to, along with continuing protective measures, to open up in a manner which can uh, restart uh, the economy even more and ensure that livelihood is also uh, made more accessible, more, uh, uh, more valuable uh, as the pandemic is, comes under control. Now, in this context, it is very important to note that, you know, the Ayushman Bharat uh, Digital Mission, the Digital Health Mission, was recently launched uh, along with the unique uh, National Health ID program. Now, this is going to be a very important program to reach, to give health care to every Indian, the details are, of course, very important. The digital must be matched with the physical, and our health agencies in the states, in the center, our digital health mission, uh, led by very dynamic people who want to ensure that every step uh, runs well, will make sure that healthcare reaches more and more people, particularly uh, the more needy. And this combination of digital, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 digital and telemedicine along with the access to local medical care at the primary level and as we've seen also at the tertiary level is something which is very important and which will continue to scale. In this context, the role played by social entrepreneurship is very, very important. They play a crucial role in inclusive rescue and rejuvenation of communities at the grassroots level but also connecting them on one side with their needs to a uh, mission such as the digital health mission. The passionate and courageous individuals we have seen and heard examples of today tackle complex social problems and design innovative and customized solutions with great impact and reach. 
Now the government has been taking several initiatives to push the startup ecosystem, and we had a first, you know, um, expansion of the startup ecosystem, largely in e-commerce and electronic areas. And this is mixed up now with a great increase in the more physical aspects of entrepreneurship in every aspect. And this has touched agriculture, space, the you know, geospatial policy and the drone policy, which has liberalized, allows these kinds of startups now to combine the excess of data to work so that healthcare, agriculture, education, data and solutions are available in a variety of ways, driven by entrepreneurs of various kinds uh, using data from all these other sectors I talked about. So in this situation, it's important for the corporate sector to also come forth and provide uh, solutions and partnership with entrepreneurs, particularly social entrepreneurs. And the examples we see today amongst the industrialists on this panel is very, very important. The COVID situation you know, brought this to the center, but you know, as the pandemic declines, we should make sure that our cooperation doesn't decline. So my best wishes to the Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and the Jubilant Bhartia Foundation for continuing this important initiative for more than a decade now. I would like to compliment once again the four finalists and the winners, uh, winner of today's award. I wish more successes to the dynamic social entrepreneurs and many more milestones uh, to the award platform. Thank you very much. Thank you. Sorry. Uh, uh, thank you, Professor Vijay Raghavan, Klaus, Hilde, Shyam, our jury members, Jaleen, of course, our finalists, Aparna, Seema, Franshu, and Dr. Sachin Bajaj. I would like to thank all of you for giving your valuable time for thought extremely close to us and of course your participation is our biggest reward on behalf of Schwab Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and Jubilant Bhartia Foundation I would like to extend our special gratitude to Professor Vijay Raghavan for joining this ceremony uh, I've known uh, Professor Raghavan for, for many years now and uh, Professor Raghavan, of course, spoke about uh, the early stage of COVID, where government was, was really involved in building capacity in India. I do remember in a very early stage in, in the month of March and April, I got a call from, uh, from Professor Raghavan when, when he said, Hari, uh, I believe Remdesivir is being developed in US, we need to bring that in India. And, uh, and the kind of support and effort that he extended to us, and he also wrote to the, the licensor of that product. And thanks to his kind of prodding and encouragement uh, that we could launch the product in, in three months time from start to start to finish. And uh, not only us, many companies, and I'm sure what he did to, to us, he did it across the board for vaccines. And today in India, we have three or four vaccines which are locally being manufactured. Uh, and, and I'm sure the, the, the work that went behind in, in terms of your prodding and support uh, played a very important role to what we could achieve. Of course, COVID-19 has taught us several things. Biggest of all, to express gratitude for what we have. Uh, I would like to thank our entire community present virtually with us from across the world that supports the social entrepreneur and participates in our journey. Actually, every year they join us. The stories of high-spirited social entrepreneurs present here with us is indeed 
very inspiring. I don't know where they get the energy and the drive and their tenacity and the purpose for what they do. People from the corporate sector who are present here with us, I'm sure every year they take learnings from them. How in a, in a very frugal manner, they, they impact millions of people. I think, and, and now use more and more use of technology to, to get to the last mile and provide help. It's really amazing. There is, for me personally, uh, this is a lot to learn. While we were apprehensive about the ceremony and the response this year, after the cruel second wave of COVID-19. But I think we, we missed the indomitable spirit of our social entrepreneurs. We, we were delighted to see more than 100 diverse submissions this year too. It shows the commitment and resilience of our social entrepreneurs. During the pandemic, this these extraordinary individuals have set an example for collaborative efforts worldwide. They have displayed the power of working together and leveraging each other's strengths. They have reached corners and territories where government or corporate India could not. Every year, I leave this platform with a lot of learnings and a sea of emotions within me. Kudos and heartiest congratulations to, to our finalists, Aparna, Seema, Franshu, and uh, Dr. Bajaj. And of course, special congratulations to, to Pranshu for Karo Sambhav. And what you said, Pranshu, about uh, the circular economy, we as consumers use products and sometimes dispose it of not realizing where is it going. And, uh, and what I saw in that video is an impossible task, which you have been able to kind of manage and build a process around to deal with it. And I think if this, your, your individual effort gets scaled up, uh, not only we will save resources, but I think uh, we will we will reduce the impact uh, of pollution uh, by by wrongfully burning of some of these wastes uh, in an inefficient manner. Congratulations again, Pranshu, for for winning the winning the award, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Davos next year. I'm also indebted to our esteemed jury members who have worked hard every year to select the finalists and the winner. They are industry stalwarts and eminent personalities from different backgrounds. They take out their valuable time and dedicate themselves fully to make the tough choice for the finalists and the winner. Special thanks to Shireen, who makes this happen every year for the last 12 years with the same energy and spirit. A special word of thanks to Klaus and Hilde for their enduring support and encouragement for this unique and the only kind of partnership in the world which the Swap Foundation has with us. We are indeed very grateful and commit ourselves to the cause of promoting the social entrepreneurs. A special appreciation to Francois and Goy at Swap Foundation for closely working with, with Jubilant Bhartia Foundation, Vivek Prakash and Runa and the entire team for putting this event and for going through the entire process for the last several months of while the second wave of COVID-19 was going on in India. And of course, a special thanks to Ajay, who has been the master of ceremony uh, for the last, almost from the start, 
that we partnered with the foundation. Thank you, Ajay, for all the good work that you do very quietly behind the scene. Thank you once again, everyone in the audience for your enthusiasm and active participation today. We hope to see all of you next year with the same energy and the force, hopefully in person. Thank you. Thank you again and see you next year.